Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go through a bunch of our new features that uh, will be in Flack 8. And uh, I'm assuming everyone knows that the external beta is going to be released at the end of the week. So um, yeah, it'll be nice just to have an overview of, of what to expect in Flack 8. And I also have Jen on the line for any questions that I might not be able to answer myself. OK. Um, <laughs> Here's um, a list of our, our main new features in Slack 8. Uh, we're a 64-bit version uh, in addition to our 32-bit version. Uh, we have multi-threaded fluid flow calculation, new and updated constitutive models. Uh, we're offering factor of safety contouring built directly into the GUI. Uh, we have a structural element that can now be used in axisymmetric models. We have a new seismic input manipulation wizard for dynamic simulations. We have a built-in control of boundary relax force relaxation, boundary force relaxation, and uh, we have a new continuous color scheme for contour plots. We have a handful of uh, groundwater flow analyses. Um, a bunch of new graphical user interface enhancements, and a bunch of smaller features that we're adding that I think are really good and that's going to really speed up using Slack and make it a lot quicker. Yeah. So um, here are some of the speed of memory improvements that we've added. Um, of course, we have the 64-bit version, and that's going to uh, eliminate a lot of the um, memory limitations imposed by 32-bit uh, operating system. And it's going to allow for larger models, and the models are only going to be limited by the physical memory of the computer. Additionally, we have the multi-threaded fluid flow calculation added. In FLAC 7, the calculations of the equations of motion and constitutive relations were multi-threaded. But now in FLAC 8, we've added multi-threaded calculations for fluid flow. And this is going to increase the speed of calculations, but will vary based on your computer, based on the number of processors, processor architecture, and available RAM on your computer. So I'm going to uh, quickly go through the new and updated constitutive models. We have the updated cap yield CUI soil model, plastic hardening model, um, more cool model with multi-directional tensile failure, also known as the more T model, an anisotropic elastic model with ubiquitous joint weakness planes, the can isotropic model, the more cool model with swelling behavior, the swell model, and the power law viscoplastic creep model with ubiquitous joint weakness planes. Kupal model. Um, and just as a note, the pH model and the more T model are both working in 3D right now. They're still being tested in Flack 8, and there will be updates available to users as the models get tested and verified. So the first model, the updated CY uh, soil model. Model features include a cap hardening law to capture the volumetric power law behavior observed in isotropic compaction tests, a friction hardening law to reproduce the hyperbolic stress strain law behavior observed in drain triaxial tests, a compaction dilation law to model irrecoverable volumetric strain taking place as a result of soil shearing. And these features are all built into the code in the current version of the constitutive model. Um, the user-defined hardening softening laws are communicated to the model by means of table. Next, we have uh, the plastic hardening model. This model um, extends the hyperbolic Duncan Chang nonlinear elastic model to an elastoplastic counterpart to provide better pre-failure stress-strain relationships. Different stiffnesses are introduced for primary loading and unloading reloading. And there are two types of hardening, namely shear hardening and volumetric hardening in the model. Next we have the Morty model. 
And the inputs for this model are the same as the more cooling model. But if there is no tensile failure or all the tensile cracks are closed, the model behaves the same as a perfectly plastic, more coolant substitutive model. But if the tensile strength is exceeded, a crack is formed perpendicular to the principal tensile stress. No crack is allowed to develop in other directions. After the crack is closed, a new crack is equally likely in any other direction. Next, isotropic. This model accounts for the presence of an orientation of weakness in a flat, elastic, anisotropic model. The plane of weakness is in the same orientation as the plane of elastic isotropy. The criterion for failure on the plane whose orientation is given consists of a more Coulomb envelope with a tension cutoff. And the model can be used to simulate the behavior and account for slip conditions in the direction of layering. Then we have the swell model. This model is based on the more cooling constitutive model. And wetting-induced deformations are taken into account by coupling the wetting strains with the initial model state prior to wetting. And our last model is the Kupal model. This model simulates the viscous, elastic, plastic, mechanical behavior of ubiquitous joint rock with sea power type creep occurring in rock matrix. It combines two existing models in SLAC, the sea power and ubiquitous joint models. Um, it accounts for the presence of an orientation of weakness, and yield may occur in either the solid or along a weak plane, or both, depending on the stress state, the orientation of the weak plane and the material properties of the solid and weak plane. So those are all of our new, uh, new and updated constitutive models. So now I'm going to go through some of the other features that we have um, added to FLAC8. So we've added the ability to um, plot factor of safety contours. And um, this was in FLAC7, but you had to use a fish function. So now that this uh, is built directly into the GUI, uh, it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to use. And I know other software companies, such as Slide, do have this ability. So it's nice. I think it's nice uh, for the users to have this option built into Slack as well. And then it also allows for multiple minimum states to be checked, which I think is um, nice to visualize. So um, I just have a few images showing where, where this is now found in the GUI. Uh, to run the factor of safety contouring, you go to um, run and, and then run FOS contour. And then the simulation will run. And then you go to the plot, plot model. And then we have a factor of safety folder where you can find the F contour option. Click on that, and then the, the factor of safety contour plot will um, pop up. Next, we have the um, structural element, which can be used in axisymmetric models. It's a shell element. Uh, shell elements are two-dimensional elements with three degrees of freedom at each node. Um, it allows for calculation of in-plane and out-of-plane quantities, such as resultants and coupons. And some applications are shaft lining, pressure vessels, and circular plates. So we've also added this uh, seismic input manipulation wizard. And it facilitates pre-processing of seismic input signals. And then it will convert the signals into a table. And there are four steps. Uh, and Slack will take you through each of the steps, uh, including ground motion selection, filtering, baseline correction, and then exploring with the file. 
And so I've, I've made a quick demonstration of, of um, how you can do this in Slack, just so that everyone can see what it looks like. Okay, so the user uh, uh, imports the ground motion data from a Slack history file, Slack table, or a peer file. And you can either velocity or acceleration and then specify the unit. And next uh, is the filtering step. The user can filter ground motion data to remove high frequency components with a specified frequency cutoff. Then we have the baseline correction. The user can add a baseline correction for velocity or displacement drift by removing either the mean acceleration, the running average displacement, uh, a polynomial fit displacement, or a low frequency sign function. And then you process data as history or a flack table file in the last step. Okay. So the next uh, really cool feature is the built-in control of boundary force relaxation. It gives the user the ability to control boundary forces and relax gradually, as well as the ability to create a ground reaction curve. And for anyone who's already done this in Flex 7, it took multiple fish functions uh, to create ground reaction curves and to simulate these reaction forces. So it's often a very lengthy process. And now this functionality has built, been built directly into FLAC 8 and GUI, which makes it really easy to use and much less time consuming than previous versions of FLAC. Um, and additionally, the user can simulate boundary force relaxation on multiple tunnel excavations simultaneously and calculate the 3D effect on tunnel volume loss and ground deformation. So I have another um, quick demonstration of how you can generate a ground reaction curve with this um, new ability. So uh, here we have a tunnel excavation, and we're going to apply these relaxed forces around the tunnel. So you go to uh, in situ, apply, and then you can see on the side under boundary condition type, you have the relax built right in there. So you select relax, select your boundary, and then you click assign to add the number of steps you'd like to relax in. And we want 90% relaxation, so we type 0.1 as the end factor. And to generate the ground reaction table, um, you Add the table numbers of the histories that contain vertical and horizontal closures. Click OK. Execute. And then you just solve the model and plot up the tables in order to get your ground reaction curve. And this is also nice for if you want to support uh, after, let's say, 40% uh, relaxation or something. This is really easy to, to use now. So we have um, a new continuous color scheme for contour plotting. And I have a quick demonstration of how to use that as well. So on our plot, you go to the plot color, and you have two options. You have color option, continuous color option. And I just wanted to show it off because I thought it was pretty cool, um, really easy to use. And I know this is, this is another thing that our clients have been asking for for a while. I'm really glad this is a new version. So uh, here's some of our main updates to groundwater flow analysis. The user now has the ability to uh, groundwater table command even when your model is not configured for groundwater flow. Slack now has the ability to solve uncoupled fluid mechanical analyses. And we've added a feature that automatically bounds the fluid bulk modulus and coupled simulations to a reasonable value. And we also have um, the automatic calculation of the fluid bulk modulus for transient fluid. 
Slack will automatically adjust the fluid modulus in order to preserve the diffusivity. Okay, so a few more uh, enhancements to the graphical user interface. We've improved the model property dialog dialogue, um, and this will give the user just more control of what they want to input, and we offer basic and advanced input. So um, here's the dialogue for the model QI soil properties. Uh, right in the top box, you don't have the advanced check, so you have more limited options, but if you check the advanced, you, you have a lot more options of what parameters you can input to your model. And uh, boundary conditions are now easier to apply across attached grids. Next, um, users can now use the control key and to uh, select multiple files when calling tables or other files. And um, also display the zone number at the bottom left-hand corner of the flat window. This is a uh, quick video showing that as well. Um, if you click on the show mouse coordinates icon, then uh, you can see the zone uh, IJ coordinate in the bottom left-hand corner. I think this is really because now you don't have to make a plot saying which grid number you're looking at. I think this is a lot more efficient. Okay, and then um, another cool feature, uh, you can export plot history uh, by right-clicking on the video. Um, so you go to a history plot, you right-click, and you go to view data, and all of your data just pops up. And I know this is something that um, doing plot support, I get this question all the time for an easier way to directly export history data. So I I think our users are going to be really happy about this feature. And a few more. Um, we've moved the plot FOS tab uh, from the run tab to the plot tab. So just to avoid some of the confusion we've been getting in the past. You can now adjust the font size on the record pane and caption pane by using the control plus the mouse scroll. Uh, we now offer a total head boundary condition option. And when you're fixing grid points, you can now select a region so you don't have to drag your mouse over um, all of the grid points that you want to fix. You can just uh, specify which region and Slack will highlight that whole section. Additionally, we have uh, uh, added the ability to hide or show the DOS console window. So if you go to show, sources must show. Um, then when you start flash 8, either it will turn on or turn off depending on how you have that selected. So here are some of our new features that we've added to fish for flax. We've increased the maximum character limit per line from 80 to 200 characters in the fish. Um, there are a few new fish variables. Uh, in which relate to the zone center, where X center is the X component of the zone center, Y center is the Y component of the zone center, and the total displacement of the zone center. So those have all been added. And we also have a new fish function to vary uh, the slope angle for a given factor of safety. Okay, so here are some of our new features for structural elements. Um, it can in include and rock bolts for factor of safety calculations. You can fix the velocity in normal and shear direction for structural elements. We've built the moment thrust and shear thrust diagrams into the GUI, so that's um, pretty quick to use. The force and velocities in axial and shear direction we built into structural elements. Um, we, you can now define the rotational stiffness for structural elements. 
And we've also added the ability to add the length and angle for structural elements. And if you look at the dialog box on the bottom right, you can see if you um, enter the start node, then for the end node, you can add the angle and the length. So a few, a few more features relating to commands, tables, and here. So um, for the print profile command, we've also added a table keyword. Uh, we've modified the history write format when out outputting multiple histories. Users can choose to store different histories vertically or horizontally. Uh, we've added the close keyword for history for the history write command, and we've also added the ability to solve elastic for most constitutive models. And finally, we have the updates to flat slope. Uh, you're now able to adjust the font size on the record pane and caption pane. And you have the ability to plot core pressure. And the big one are, is that um, we're reducing the price of flat slope. So it's going to be a really affordable software. And I think um, it's going to be great for new time users to our software. Okay, and if we have any questions, you can either direct them to myself or Jim.